All right, so in today's video, we're going to be checking out the new 5-in-1 uh, Tiny Whoop flight controller from Beta FPV. This is uh, for the Air 65. And uh, you've already seen the video on the 4-in-1, which is uh, basically the same flight controller but without the receiver. So this one has the built-in Express LRS receiver in there now. And it's going to show you, this is actually the build that I put together f uh, with this board. It is under 15 grams, my first sub 15 gram build. Probably could even gotten less. I'll talk about that in some detail shortly here, but let's take a look at the board itself. It is supposed to be 3.6 grams. It's a little bit more on my scale. I'll show you that in a second, but this is the side with the uh, JST USB port here, much uh, bigger motor wire pads very easy to solder to pads are just generally pretty big overall for this class of flight controller and you can see we have we have the uh, express alert stuff here on top got a black box i think one of these is a black box they go the same g 473 mcu the same vtx 25 to 400 milliwatts the same um blue j escs just that now we have the um, Express LRS receiver built in now. You have the Express LRS antenna here, 2.4 gigahertz. UFL connector for the built-in VTX and you do get of course all of the accessories. So I'll just show this once again. These are the rubber grommets along with the um, screws for mounting. This is the USB-C port. You're going to need that to plug into Betaflight. Includes a 90 degree um, BT 2.0 connector, and then you get this uh, UFL connector for your VTX antenna. And here it is uh, next to the 4-in-1. Obviously, uh, the top part is missing on the 4-in-1 because that is where the Express LRS receiver would have been, which is on the 5-in-1. And on the Air 65, the Bind and Fly includes the flat antenna uh, Express LRS receiver. And I had mistakenly assumed that this 5-in-1 would be lighter than the 4-in-1 plus receiver together, but it actually is a little bit more. Now, granted, there's no wires on here, no, no solders, so not taking that into account, but let's, I'll just want to show you. They list this receiver as 0.53 grams, so... This, this has taken off something. It's got a little bit of soldier on there. And yeah, it's at 0.53 grams. So then this plus the four and one, on my scale, it's like 3.34399. So if we look at the weight of the five and one, it's coming in at 3.7. It's there's a fan here, so yeah, 3.7-ish, 3.76, 3.77, so let's just say 3.775, which is actually more than the 3.6, which is advertised. And this is 2.864. I think it's 2.9 advertised. This one's maybe a little bit lighter. And then the combination is 3.39, so it's lighter than the five and one. Now, you, I'm not including the wires, so you'll need some, probably some short wires between the receiver and the board and probably maybe some glue or some VHP to attach it to the flight controller to get the weight down. But I would say if you add all that, 3.4, maybe 3.5, so maybe a 10th of a gram if you're really careful, it's still going to be less than the five and one at three point in my case three point seven seven. This doesn't have any solder on it, so these this is unsoldered and this is unsoldered. So no solder on here. That's going to add some weight, and I'll talk about that also in a little bit. So I actually retired this uh, my lightest tiny whip build from a year ago. It's been actually almost exactly a year, like August of twenty twenty three, and this one came in at. 15.68 grams. Uh, I stole the motors off of this build and put it onto this build and the camera uh, and the 
um, BT 2.0 pigtail. So those are, I repurposed it off of that build to make this build. And this build here is not using the Beta FPV Air 65 light frame. This is the uh, Cockroach AF, or the light AF frame from Newbie Drone, which weighs, I think, two tenths of a gram less. I think this comes in at like 3.4, and then the uh, Beta FPV um, Ultra light frame comes in at 3.6. So I went with this one here because it's a little bit lighter, and obviously I'm using the 5 in 1. Um, the since run cam nano 3 and i believe this is the lightest camera i think uh, it's 1.1 grams and for those of you that want to go with the like the tiny whip pinch camera i believe that's 1.25 grams can't quote me on that one i am using the same motors from last year this is the 0702 sc 25000 kv motors and i believe the bind in flies are coming out now the air 65 race is um, the 27,000 kV motor and then the freestyle is a 23,000 kV motor. I actually like this 25,000 kV motor quite a bit. I'm getting really good efficiency on it. Over a four minute flight time on the um, 1S250, these new lava lipos or the 260s. So we'll talk about that as well. But you guys are all wondering what does this weigh? And this one here is 14.86868 so yeah definitely under 15 grams um, I am using a longer uh, VTX antenna I didn't I did not use the one that it came with but you know again I flew this guy the new one on this 260 here so uh, again 14.85 plus the 260 battery. I guess I could remove the sticker for a couple tenths of a gram. We're looking at, you know, what is this? So uh, just a brief discussion on this build. I did try to optimize it a bit more than the build I did last year to obviously try and get below the uh, 15 grams. And, you know, I'm using these these uh, peak screws, these are the beta FPV versions. I did I did use only two for the fronts and three for the backs. I probably could have shortened the motor wires a little bit more here. I did remove the heat shrink from this here. This was actually on the previous build, so that's extra weight. There's a little, I mean, every little thing adds up to just uh, more weight. And uh, I did add extra weight here with the longer antenna because I did want better video reception. Um, I did shorten this pigtail a little bit, and it's very, very tight. Um, I did cut down, I did take, get, get rid of the connector for the camera, and I directly soldered to these little pads here. By the way, on this 5-in-1, this those pads are really tiny and really difficult to solder to. It took a while for me to do, do the, this wire here, and I cut them exactly to length to just get rid of any possible weight po as, 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 as anywhere possible. I did make a mistake here on on when I soldered these motor pads here. I should have just put solder on the edges. So if you look at the this one here that's not got any solder on it, when I, when I tinned these pads, I tinned them on the top and I should have tinned them on the side. So you can see that there's small little grooves here that you can solder to. And that would eliminate a lot of solder. I could just put them on the side and then and then solder the motor wires directly to that, which is what I did. I ended up soldering directly to the side here. It's yeah, it's hard, it's really hard to see. You can see the motor wires are on the side. So I have all of this extra solder on here that I don't even need or I'm not even using. So that could have easily taken off. I could have saved another tenth of a gram, maybe um, you know, two tenths of a gram possibly. So, you know, and then I could have shortened these motor wires even a little bit more. So, yeah, there's, there's while I got this down to 14.85 grams, there's room for improvement even here. Um, obviously you can stick with a shorter VTX cable here. Even going with, not going with this frame, but with the Air 65 frame, but chopped down. So here's the Air 65 frame. So this one's 2.67 grams. 
But then I chopped off some of the legs like I did on the standard Meteor 65 frame. So we're going from, this is an unmodified, 2.65 grams to the modified version is 2.44 grams. So I could have gone this way as well, maybe even chopped off some more weight off of the frame. I believe this is coming in at 2.4 grams. So maybe this is basically, you know, kind of a wash. I did remove the some plastic on the cockroach frame here so you can see where the camera is obviously the camera is glued in here that's going to support the front prop guards here so i got rid of basically this part here and then this this looks like, so this part here and this part here those are removed here in this part of the frame but uh it still exists everywhere else you know on the sides and in the back yeah, there's not much you can do to get rid of more weight on this frame this is pretty much the lowest you can get because you have three spokes here I suppose I could change this instead of four spokes and go with three spokes instead and possibly get a little bit lighter, kind of a wash, as I said. The other thing I did was I, because this cockroach frame uses a very thin, like they, they kind of took out this plastic here, these peak screws are too long and they're going to butt into the this PCB board here that protects the motor wires. So you got to chop off about a millimeter from each of these screws. That also saves a little bit of weight as well, but you know, I think what going from the, you know, if I, if I was to do it again, I would probably not use the five in one. I would go with the four in one plus the separate receiver. And that's, I guess that's about two tenths of a gram. So technically if you don't screw up and put too much solder on here, maybe optimize the frame a little bit more, and use a different flight control, use the four in one instead of the five in one, and just like really optimize it. You could probably get this down to 14.6. If you're, if you're really aggressive, 14.5, but I don't know about getting much lower than that. If you've seen a build that gets below 14 and a half grams, uh, please let me know about it. I want to investigate that. That I would be, I would, I'm wondering where they're, they're actually reducing even additional weight because that's pretty aggressive. So in terms of the way it flies, pretty standard beta flight setup, uh, latest version, 451. I use the um, UAV Tech 1S Tune from beta flight. So just pop that on there, put on my rates and I didn't do really much or anything else. Oh, I did want to note that I, you know, I put the board in here with the USB port on the bottom so that it's in the standard orientation. So while the motors are inverted, the flight controller is basically in the same in orientation that it's in on the in up, upright standard whoop. So you don't have to do any of the motor, I guess, reordering and motor, I guess, uh, I guess direction swapping and that kind of stuff that you would have to do if you flip the board over. So. A lot of the stuff that I talk about in the other videos where I flip the board over, you don't have to do that in this one. It's kind of, I think it's actually a little bit easier and it makes more sense because the uh, wires for the uh, receiver antenna and the VTX antenna are on this side of the board and I'd rather have them on top where you're in the direction that you're flying versus on the bottom. And uh, yeah, you, I probably could go with a little bit more foam here, but I tend to land on like carpet or a sofa or something when I'm flying in the house. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. The foam here is mainly to protect the electronics from anything that might hit it. Um, but yeah, a lot of it's still exposure. I just, again, optimized this to the max as much as I could to get the weight down as much as possible. And uh, in terms of flight time, as I mentioned before, on I just flew it on the 260. I didn't even bother with the 300 because this gives me plenty of flight time. I get over four minutes of flight on this 260 which is really impressive. All the other uh, ultralight builds that I put together, even on the 300s, I'm barely squeezing out a little more than three minutes. So when you get the weight down this low, and with also, you know, even though you're carrying less capacity in terms of overall battery, the battery is also lighter as well. So the whole thing just feels super snappy, uh, very responsive, and you, get, and you can fly aggressively and you get more flight time. So it's the best of, both worlds this is really like the way to go in my opinion yeah so 
I think that'll cover this basically over 20 minutes already. So I'm going to end it here. Links to all the other videos and the products, the flight controllers, everything that I mentioned will be down in the video description. So go ahead and check that out. Leave your questions down in the comment section as always. And hopefully, um, yeah, I'll, I might, I don't know, maybe I'll make another video on another even lighter setup, but I don't know how much more I'll gain in terms of a benefit. Uh, by going down to 14.6 grams, two tenths of a gram, maybe I'll get another 10 seconds of flight time, who knows? You know, it's, I kind of already feel like I've uh, squeezed out as much as I possibly can out of what we have in terms of parts available today, which is obviously a lot better than what we were in a year ago. So maybe in a year, well, I'll make a new video and Maybe we'll get under 14 grams. That would be crazy. So that'll do this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.